Hi, my name is Cindy Rang with the Fabric Patch in Ephrata, Washington, and I just got back from an Indonesian trip where we toured the Hoffman factory. So we were there for about five hours total, and I have narrowed it down to, it's fairly long, it's about 55 minutes of footage, but it's really interesting to see how they do things. So I hope you'll watch, uh, watch to the end. There's a lot of fun things, but these are the things when we kept saying 1895s, 1895s are the Hoffman solids. And we kept saying 885s, and I think sometimes I said 785s, and they are the Hoffman, the little small dots. And so these were a lot of the things that we saw repeatedly. And um, take a look, see what you think, and then uh, we're going to chat about it a little bit before box opening, and I'll tell you some of the weird things that you might see. And I wanted to mention one thing. Those floors, they were all concrete. Um, I noticed in the footage when I was editing, it almost looks like dirt like black earth, but it is just all concrete. So it is very clean, um, but it is a third world country and um, uh, beautifully done batiks. And we were so excited to be able to have the tour because of course they don't actually allow people in there anymore. So it was really fun uh, to be able to go behind the scenes, get some footage for you guys. And one other thing I'm gonna mention is that it's a little, as we've walked through the factory, it's a little out of order as to, you know, here's the gray good, and then we do this, and then we dry it, and then we do this, and then we dry it, and then we do this, and then we dry it, and then we boil it. Um, you will see as we walk through, you almost have to put the pieces together. And um, I hope you enjoy it. We should. <laughs> So we are busy getting unloaded from the bus. Everybody else has spotted what I've spotted. We're going to go in and get started. Hey, and Aaron, <laughs> our Hoffman rep, is going to tell us everything we're looking at. Ah. <laughs> I'm just going to take a quick little walk around and then we'll go start our tour. This is one of our guides, our drivers. That kind of, you can see it's sort of like basically right in the middle of a residential area and um, they really don't allow tours here anymore. Um, so we have special permission. This is Stephanie, Aaron's wife. Aaron's up there with them. I know, we saw it drawing, yeah. Walking down just this alley. It is still the rainy season. Um, they were explaining earlier that when we order batik and they say it'll be coming in six months if it's during the rainy season, everything stops and that might delay it by a month or so. So, more vats in there. Just gonna peek out here. I was thinking they were 1895s, isn't that what you think they look like? Oh, not I'm these up here, but those back the there. Oh yeah, these are all, Hi. right? at how much probably what do you think Aaron? each one of those is about 10 yards do you think each run a 10 yard run I never in my life hey Neither each one of you grab a piece and run like hell <laughs> oh yeah well, and end up in your store well maybe you know, and you never know, and this could really just be the first step of it. You know, yeah. they might then stamp it afterwards. Yeah, they're taking a break. Yeah, lots of. Wow, look at all of the peach here. So it is about 90 degrees here uh, already today. Uh, pretty humid, you can tell. And um, it is only 8.30 in the morning. All right, well, we've disrupted. We've been, <laughs> we're going for our tour. Just gonna show you as we walk in. I'm sure this is part of their water treatment plant, but Rama, 
our tour guide is going to explain it, but just so you can see as we come in. So there's a water treatment. That so water treatment, water that's water. what I thought it was, yeah. So we've walked past already three of these little Hindu temples. They already have the little offerings up there. They have, some are for uh, the god, some are for the work, some are for the land, and so they have offerings everywhere. And they have these nasty things. Look how big they are. Uh, I think it's a centipede. No. Look how big it is. Oh, that one just had baby. Something happened. Caterpillar? No. Yeah. Centipedes are... Like dummy. Okay, they bite. <laughs> they stop. <laughs> I think it's just amazing how they can line everything up so well. So if you guys got any questions, just ask if you don't understand what's going on in there. There's another question last week ago and in a couple of days' time to count more fabric with the uh, boil up the water and of removing the wax from the fabric. However, before they boil this off, they still need to dye this one more time so we get the dual layer of color. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Today, doing Laura, it might not be happening. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll get to see that process, but we can see the results. So. I'm, uh, I'm half American. <laughs> okay. How many Working in this plant. <laughs> at, at a time, there was probably about 150. Um, Charlie, what do you think? Now there's about 75, 80. It depends on how the orders run. If we have a lot of orders, a lot of people come in from Java. Uh, and Java's like the epicenter for Batik, right? So we get a lot of skilled laborers from Java coming in uh, to work for maybe a couple months at a time and then they go back home. And most of the workers are from uh, either from Solo, from uh, Jogjakarta, or from Pakalangan. And these three cities are kind of the epicenters of Batik and all of Indonesia. Yeah. Um, good morning, Cindy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, yeah. Oh, so it's Laura. Aaron. 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 Uh, just, uh, the, color, the color on this is called Julie. So if you're looking for W2576, Julie. Make a note. Uh, and then we have how guys. many colors? How many colors? How many colors? Uh, you know, I, I'm not sure. I, I'm not sure how many colors there are. Because um, So at this plantation, uh, plantation sorry, at this fa uh, factory, we have essentially six different head bot seekers. So we're at one place right now where they focus on their specific colors. Uh, throughout this whole eight hectare plot, uh, every single batik factory has their own kind of master of color, uh, and they do all the dyeing, make all the recipes and kind of secret recipes for uh, all the batiks. So this motif might appear in another place, but with a different color. So it seems to me that uh, Zaris, who is the leader of this group, he does just, um, just this one color, which is like a salvia kind of. You know, purple color. So this is actually, uh, it might be hard to see, but this might actually be a double chop. So it's chopped twice, but the colors are really close. So they actually do the, the batik process up to basically three times, right? Charlie, they, they dye it up to three times. So they're gonna go do this kind of watercolor techniques, which we'll get to later, we'll see later. Uh, and then they're gonna chop the fabric, print the fabric with wax, uh, water glass it, do the whole process over again. So run it through a vat and then chop it again, then water glass it one more time, and then they can finally boil it off and reveal all the colors. Wow. What, is, what is water glassing? Is so, uh, water glass is a fixative. Okay, okay, um, okay gotcha. Guys, so yeah, so fixes, so fixes the dye. Uh, and that stops, you know, it stops all your batiks from bleeding off in, when you wash them or when you receive them. So one of our biggest quality control processes is to always test for what we call here lunzor, which means bleeding of the fabric or the dyes. 
Charlie, do you think they're ready outside, or do you guys want to see some? Ready. Okay. Run through here, okay. Do it. Because it's like what, 5 p.m. probably at home? That puppy doesn't want us here. Oh, I don't see the chop here. I think we're going to go into another room where there's more chops. Oh, so they're going through a second. Am I in your way? Are you recording? So a second die. Yeah, see what they're doing? So they've already stamped this a couple times, colored it a couple times, and now it's going through another die and then my guess is after they've done that they're going to take it outside well i sure would have thought you'd soak it in there right i know no it just passes through uh, i guess it's locked in not yeah really, uh, yeah and it's it still yeah you know it can die yeah Right. And this, oh, feel it. It's all wax. It's like, it feels like wax paper. Stiff, oh, stiff, stiff. Because all those leaves are still oh, wow. wax. Yeah. Okay, and uh, Lori is trying to FaceTime Brianna. So that she can be here with us. It's about 5 p.m. at home. Oh. So once they have them on those rolls, oh, see, they're just adding more dye. That, that right there. There's not a lot in there, you can see. And then we're going to walk out here and out here is right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Then they're going to, um, they walk. Oh, there's a little puppies that were barking. Oh, little babies. Oh, <laughs> sorry. We got totally distracted by the puppies. Um, then they bring it all out here and they're gonna lay it out. I mean, it's quite primitive, really. Uh, oh, more dyes. I don't know what all this is for. And it's just grass. No, it's just grass. It looks. So, traditional Batsy paint, so it's very rare you're gonna find a Batsy printer who is a female. Um, I'm not sure why that's the case. Rice patties right next to us. And here they are. This is the stuff they just did. I don't know if you can tell, but it is really stiff because then they'll go through that um, boiling process. And so the guy back here, I don't know if you can see him in the back, he has got like some purple or something. Uh, he's just got some little plastic water bottles is what he's using. This is a really purple. important step in the Bati process and this is called prewell. So it's a process of essentially scrunching up the fabric with your hands over grass and sprinkling it with soda ash. Uh, and that gives the, the Bati, you know the 1895 that we do? So this technique is what gives the 1895 
Very good style. Wow. So is that soda add? In these bottles, it's actually uh, Oikotex dyes, so fiber reactive dyes, and it's an actual chemical reaction with the fibers, and so it binds with the fibers. Uh, Oikotex dyes are certified safety, uh, certified 100 uh, safety cleaner. Uh, so we use all these dyes from Oikotex certified dyes from dye stuff. Uh, we'll get to the purification process of the dyes and everything before they all run out a bit later. So, right now, unfortunately, they're not doing the technique with the soda app, which they, they sprinkle on top. Uh, see if they can get a demonstration from you guys. Oh, here, here, here. Right here. This is the magic that's being worked on here. Oh. I'll go up close for you and I'll get a picture. Just when it's kind of cloudy, we end up with kind of a muddy. Kind of they call it busuk, which is the word for rotten in Indonesian. Sludge. Uh, <laughs> yes, yeah, sludge. Uh, so we always try and work in the most optimal conditions. That you guys That's a beautiful piece. However, there are some times where we do want more of a gray, kind of misty effect, and sometimes we have to work early in the morning, like 5 a.m., 6 a.m., such as Raven, which is a, a pure black. Uh, we have to work from 4 a.m. to get that started. Yeah, so it's all temperature dependent. So how many meters are you expecting to These are about 15 yards. Uh, that's, we find that 15 yards is the most ideal working. Uh, uh, boil it off. All the wax to boil off is really easy. Um, anything longer than that, it's a little bit more labor intensive. We prefer to work with more manageable cuts. <laughs> And you've intentionally done the reps in the... They've done it themselves just walking on the edge here. And oh, oh, funny. <laughs> just letting you know, the grass does always grow back. We've been doing this for a long time. <laughs> no harm has it done to the grass. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah. What's the mountain in the distance? Gunung Agung, the holiest mountain in Bali. Yeah. So in Balinese, north is actually towards there. Mm. And south is towards the sea. So yeah. It's a pretty cool view. Not gonna lie. How many yards do you um, or bolts or how do you measure it uh, per day do you guys do? I suppose it depends on the weather, but depends on the weather and the amount of orders we have going but Charlie, well, what was each, the capacity? Each contractor does about 2,000 yards each per day. Per day. Yeah. That's if you get orders. That, they have all potential the to do about 2,000. Yeah. Okay. Great. So that's uh, 1,200 yards per day. Yeah. Production. Excellent. And now he's putting on the soda ash. We use that um, when we do our dye classes. Um, the soda ash is creating this effect here. Lights in the dots. Dots. And basically, I don't know what Here is an up close. Which is of course just a dye setting. When we buy it at home, uh, we buy it over in the pool section. It's something that people put in their pool for some reason. I'm not sure that I understand why, but soda ashes. If you're looking for it because you want to play with reactive dyes and you want to make sure that your color is set. Um, one of the important steps is that soda ash. And that's where you find it. So you made your top? Yes, yeah, you I, I made this. You this come in it. and just dye them yourself. Uh, I've done that a couple of times. Yeah. Now I have someone else do it yeah. for me. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I, I do the designs and uh -huh. the colors um, and the cut and the fit. Mm -hmm. And this is 1895 eggplant. 
Oh, oh I like that color. Pretty big one. But we changed the name to Aubergine. So Aubergine? Sounds, sure. Yeah, Aubergine. Sure. Sounds sure. a bit nicer. Classier. Classier, yeah. <laughs> How long have you worked for Hoffman? Where Universal? Uh, my, my father has been working for them for like 30 plus years. You grew up in it. Wow. And I'm working for my father for about seven years now. Uh, so just yeah, steering the ship while he's out playing, doing his thing, you know. So, yeah. Go ahead. You can walk by me. Here's the next, uh, this is how they take it out there. Go ahead, you can walk by me. And uh, I just wanted to note that they're obviously not doing too much to harm the environment. All along us, there are plants and flowers and lots and lots of greenery. And he talked quite a bit about um, the water filtration process, but I didn't get Rama on tape explaining that, so. So that material is drying right now. So that's already been water glass, washed, everything. Now it's just setting in the sun uh, to dry. You guys want to see all, we can see all that in a second out there. Oh, okay. want to get everyone out yeah. of the sun first. Hello. Hello. <laughs> and more, I'm gonna try to, you can't see, but, um, more um, temples at the end, if you can see those back there. And then here is where they've stopped that first two steps where he's going, he says, it's heavy, get out of my way, where they were going in to diet um, back over there. Remember where we were before. Oh, poor guy. Oh, we made him hold it for too long. Lots of birds. These guys love to have the birds because they just love to hear the hear them sing. Is what they said. It's uh, some of the girls were asking, it's like, well, are we going to be able to shop there? And I said, no, it is not that kind of a place. What it is here is just manufacturing, very remote. Nobody would know how to cut you a yard of fabric, and it's just not. It's just not what it is. Again, notice all of the flowers. It's just beautiful and remote. And all of the offerings. And here's more that are drying. So these are totally done and out here drying. I'm going to go up and touch one. There's another one of those bugs. I'm so obsessed with bugs on this trip that I'm going to touch it. Oh, yeah. Okay, so this has been boiled. This is super, super soft. Super soft. So then after that, oh, and there was a little wayward bug. So then after this, it will, I think he's going to take us there now. It'll go through one more process where they press it a bit and they add the um, conditioning um, and the, um, the, uh, the finishing to the fabric. <laughs> and the finishing consists of a softener and a sun guard and a stain guard, um, much like when you uh, get your upholstery and your carpet. It's the same kind of idea, which is why um, a lot of quilters decide not to pre-wash their fabric because there is a, again, sun guard and stain guard added to that finish. And can you see off in the distance, that was the peach stuff that we saw early on. Okay, we'll rejoin our group. Release, and so we usually do them in small swatches like so. Just a little sample. Yeah. I got that turquoise purple, like really that cool. Color. And so this is just... like peacock or something? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, peacock. Yeah, I think peacock. Yeah, very peacock. And then, yeah. Ooh. And there's even more over there. Very yep. coral. Oh, yeah. Yeah, eight hectare plot. This coral is beautiful. I'm going to just show you up close. So this one, um, you can see this is not the same one that was drying over there. This one was not chopped. So this is um, just goes through multiple dyeing processes. But um, this is using the bottle process uh, for all of the colors. And so just one at a time, one at a time where, remember seeing him with his plastic bottle.
And that's what's so nice about it is that it really is so um, intermittent. Uh, there is no pattern at all. And um, sometimes where you might see, I mean, I can't show you an example here, but where you see a large concentration of purple or a large concentration of the peach, it is not a, um, a flaw in the fabric. It is all hand done. It's all done with, um, you know, skilled artisans that that's all they do. And I don't know if you, if I was recording when he said that they do different colors at different, um, there's six different locations. And this location um, does very specific colors and the other locations do the other colors. I want to also see if I can zoom in but I can't see my phone. These are our guides. Notice they're the teeth. They're walking away. I'll try to get a better picture. So you got, so the, is this what you're comparing it to? Yeah, uh, this is what they, these guys use this as a color reference. And at the office we have uh, just fresher samples. Okay. Usually we've done it so many times we can tell if it's okay. Uh, you know, the, this is a reorder, it's already been out there. And then from here, does it go another, obviously to be rolled or? Yes, yeah, so this. So these guys are measured, this is how they measure, this is about one yard right here. Um, comes into the office and we uh, do our quality control. So we test for any holes in the fabric. Uh, does it match the header? Of course it has to match the header. Then we then run it through a light table and look for any more defects, or potential defects in the fabric. Uh, and then it gets measured one more time and then flat folded in our office before being packaged and ready to ship. And then it gets rolled onto bolts in the U.S.? Um, no, I usually it's sold as flat bolt, right, in the U.S.? No, we, we sell, where it's on bolts. It's on bolts? We, you see it on bolts. So it must be bolted in California. So we used to do bolts um, and ship directly as bolts, uh, but we still do that for Canada and Denmark. Oh, okay. However, for U.S., it's all flat fold. Okay. Yeah, it's all the flat fold machine. Hmm. And flat fold doesn't mean the same thing to him as it does to us. So we think of flat fold as a different, yeah, as a different term in terms of quality, but that's not what he means. Oh, okay, yeah. That's not what, true. yeah. We call, well, it, we call it double we, end roll as well? Double end roll, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And, and that makes sense. sense. Flat fold, we see in the quilting industry in cottons, you can find some um, cottons for three ninety five a yard, not quilt quality, and they're called uh, flat folds. So okay, it could be <laughs> double end roll. Double end roll. There you go. Yeah. Yes. So everyone, everyone. Come on, get closer. Everybody gather around close around Cindy. We're trying, this is your department, right? Down the ramp. Yeah. So, whatever you guys want to ask, no, you just let us know. This is the new sandling for September. We're doing sandling now for September. New chop motifs, new colours. Wow. This is part, a very small part of it. The colours off and over. Wow. And if you guys see that, we did a box opening um, just before I left, and it was a Hoffman, I think it was the. Um, I guess it had to have been the January pack. And that's what they'll do also, is we'll have a, a monthly um, color pack along with a pattern. And so when we say that that's what it is, that's what it is. And it's always derived from something in nature. And then, um, so then we have kind of a fun thing about the chops. So, um, and do you, does somebody else make the chops for you? How do you have those made? We have them made here in Bali uh, or in Java. Or in Java. And so, and you have designers that do it, typically? You guys come up with the artwork yourselves or somebody else? Uh, uh, mainly Hoffman Designs, um, but the chop maker uh, will have to do some adjustments to make sure it's all going to register properly when we do some printing. 
And then Hoffman also has a program that if we want to do our own shop and create something that is exclusive to us, they let us do that. Wow. And so we did that. And um, we wanted something that was very specific to our area, that we think is specific to our area, but we think it probably will have um, some far-reaching um, um, interest. And it is sagebrush. So I drew the sagebrush, and then I sent it to, um, I think, was it Harley? Is that who I was working with? Haley, Haley is who I was working with. And so we talked about size and how they wanted to do it. So they created this chop, and they will keep this chop until I'm done reordering. So I choose what colors, and then there's a minimum amount um, for how many colors. And then when I'm done and I say, I don't want to use it anymore, then um, I get the chop. Oh, so, um, wow. and these, and are these on the water now? Uh, yeah. These have been sent. So they're, it takes six weeks to leave here and come to us. And so this is my fabric. Yeah. Wow. This is it. Hold it up. I can't see it. Sell out it. Right? Yeah. 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 Wow. Order a lot. And one of, we did order a lot. And the other thing that we're going to do is in your email with your guys' orders, um, you guys can pre order it because you've seen it. Um, uh, she'll have Ooh, it for you. So when it so comes pretty. in, you guys will have the first one. As Macy would say, Ooh. Way to go. Yes. I love that. Yeah. Well, Jason, we uh, represent. Nice. Yeah. A fun thing to do. Right. It was real exciting. We were yeah. keeping it a big secret so that you guys could see it first. Nice. You guys are seeing it first. Yeah. Here's some different sort of chopping going on here. Here's more chopping going on. Boy, isn't that funny how he is so uniform? So does he then, I mean, do you always do the dahlia so that he knows right where to put that? He just knows what he's doing. Hmm. He's gifted. Yeah. Wax must die pretty fast. And this is where it was a single chop. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's fairly dark in here. I don't know if you guys can see this or not. And much like everything else that we've seen in Indonesia, everything is what they call open air. So you can see that um, it's all open, open in the rafters. There's no air conditioning. They just find themselves hoping for a breeze. This is sort of a standard piece. I feel like I recognize this really well. So again, this is the stuff that has come in out of the, that's been dried. So this is their base. And then now he's chopping it and then it's gonna go through the dye process again. And there's a whole bunch down here hanging up. There's somebody's bed. So yeah, I'm gonna to touch it. Oh yeah, it's totally dry. So this stuff is um, stiff, if you can hear that. So this stuff, I'm sure, is waiting for the um, bath. I can see steaming water at the end. I'm not sure with the lighting if you're able to see that. I'm going to assume that that's where these are going to be going next. And then over here, I'm thinking that this could be I'm not sure what that is. What is this machine? That is the vat for the water glass. Oh, for the water so, glass. So, uh, unfortunately, we didn't get to see it today, but usually they'll be running water glass through there, uh, running the fabric through the water glass back oh, there. Oh, gotcha. What are the birds for? Ho uh, hobby. Hobbyist. Yeah, they all. It's a big hobby have here. Their little bird specimens. And I thought it was like canaries in a mine. It's all about air quality, right? Uh -huh. Yeah, there's lots of birds here. Open air yeah. Like yeah. Yeah, very open air. And if you can see, there's actually no wall there. That's the fence behind it. And it's all open rafters. Oh, 
Is it in Sonora? Uh, okay. I just, yes. Okay. Um, here, uh, rather than seeing so many Muslim temples like we did on uh, the island of Lombok, here we see um, uh, Buddha and um, uh, Hindu temples. Lots and lots of them. Oh, a cow. They have one called a community community building. See all of the offerings? Can you zoom in? They're everywhere. Fruit, vegetables, insects. Oops, sorry. All right. Uh, I think we're lost. We threw the drivers for a loop a little bit because we were invited to go um, from the factory um, to the headquarters to see where they do the packaging and where they handle everything else. And um, I think the drivers are confused as to where we're going. So here's all my in focus. Um, I can go in, there's another little offering area. And this is one of those community buildings. Um, he had a word for it that I can't remember, but um, but it's for the community to use. Um, if you have a birthday party or um, a celebration of some sort and um, people's houses are so small, uh, it doesn't cost you anything. You can just come and, and host everybody in these um, beautiful areas and they're free to use and it's just um, part of the community. Walking around at the fabrics, also traveling around, you must have seen a lot of people put the little offerings, might be in front of the shops, might be on the road, might be in every statue. Let me point it if they have it here. Um, usually they do. Let me check. Oh, yeah, one of them is in here. Oh, in yes. Car, and you will see them a lot. Um, let me. So you... Oh, yeah. right over here, there's yeah. one. Uh, on your right hand side is a little strength in the corner. And then also you will see them non-stop. Because that offering is like this one. Um, you will see them everywhere. Because I believe before I said, before the Hindu religion here, we already have a belief, which we call it the animism and dynamism. Believe it, in everything, it has two bodies. The bus has a physical body um, and also has a, a, a spiritual body. That is why the dead material 
can look after us from the sun, look after us from the wind, look after us from the water. That is why we give a little offering like this. In the morning, before we start driving, uh, Anom would say, Hi, bus, we are going to work today for a full day. Here is a little gift. Make sure that we are okay on the road going back. That is how this that is what people, you don't need to be smart, you don't need to be uh, a priest, you don't need, need to be a monk, but you can say that in your language because the spirit will understand what you talk about. But if you are a shopkeeper, let's say if you are working on a batik, you would say, here is a little offering uh, building of the batik, make sure that our workers are safe and make sure our production is good <coughs> and here is your little thing. But if you work in a hospital, you work in a, in, in, at school, the same thing, you will put the same thing, you will say, make sure my student will be listening to me. Or if you are a doctor, make sure that you, uh, make sure that the, the problem people come here that I can help them. So it's just a, uh, uh, an item or you call it an image that you can give it to the spirit will help your daily life activity. Thank you. It is Very called nice. offering. In, in Bali we call it uh, banzan or chana. It consists of flowers and also holy water and it has to be with the uh, incense. Why we don't put an incense? Because incense in the vehicle is very dangerous. Yes. Otherwise you would see it. Street, one way going the other way. But um, tourism is a big thing, and having two big tour buses full of 40 people, they made some concessions. They called the police ahead, and they're blocking people in the front and behind us. I just don't get tired of seeing the scenery here. All of the vegetation, all of the people wondering why we're going this way. <laughs> oh, other people sneaking down. <laughs> Okay, we've made it to the Hoffman headquarters and again you can see our buses are disrupting the locals a bit but um, they are so pleasant it's that whole um, I mean nobody gets upset over anything they no one's honking at us they're just looking at us wondering what we're doing but they uh, no one gets upset the people here are pretty amazing We'll make it inside and I'll show you some more. Uh, fabric, um, look for any burn marks, leftover wax, sometimes water glass doesn't fully get washed out. 
Um, and any defects in the fabric in terms of color or motif, because sometimes they can show us one piece of fabric that looks really good, but in the batch of maybe 120 yards, you'll get something that isn't quite matching the rest of the fabric. Uh, so this, yeah, this is the first one. Really this is a light bar. I missed the first part of it, but they put the fabric on there to look for even more um, possible flaws or issues. So it's look at the coloring. Yes. <laughs> There's that puppy again. And these are all 1895s pretty much, right? I mean, these aren't. 1895, yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. This is the guy that's doing the double end roll. So he's fixing the edge because of course they tear it. Gonna put his bolt in there. Get it started. You see he's controlling it with his foot. Oh, something is folding. See how many rolls it goes through to keep it flat. Oh, he's sewing. And I'm assuming that somewhere on here there's a counter so that they know how many um, yards are on there because when we get it um, it will say at the bottom of it we'll say exactly what it is and um, how many yards are on there oh here how old is this guy I wonder Not sure if I filmed this part before but he's doing green now when he gets to the end of the color what they do here is he's going to sew with his machine sew that green to the blue so that it's basically threaded because if you look here it's going to come up back down around in there back up over and then at the very last minute is where it folds it to come down so the reason that they sew it together is it's just like when you're doing um, surging and you tie your thread together rather than uh, re-threading your serger. Okay, I have to be careful with some of what I show you because some of these are proprietary brand new designs that have not been unveiled yet. So I can only show you certain parts here where they're um, doing reorders for the 1895s and the 870s. but. Um, uh, I wanted to point out again uh, the whole open air, uh, right? So um, everything is just open uh, up above in the rafters uh, because it's that open air conditioning. Uh, every American is melting and as usual, every uh, Malaysian and Indonesian is just fine. Oh, here you see where he's sewing that seam together again. again. And also he said that it's not typical for women uh, to do it. I can't remember what the reasoning was, but he said it's just not typical in this culture. So see there, he's sewing it together and then that way um, he doesn't have to re-thread that machine again. 
and notice his feet. I'm going to zoom in. There's a couple of these guys that work here and this out in the field. And so his feet are blue. And over there, one of the guy's feet were green and another one over there was blue. They're not used to having visitors. They're as curious about us as we are about them. And this is the machine that cuts them. So we won't see um, any Bali Pops cut today, but this is the machine that does it and it's a laser cut. So they stack all the fabrics, just like you can kind of see down there. They layer them, uh, stack them, the 42 or 40, I guess it is. And then um, stack them all here and cut them and roll them all at once so it's all exact. And for those of you guys that, if you like jelly rolls or Bali Pops, um, uh, Hoffman, they do a straight edge, not a pinked edge, which is kind of nice. <laughs> I think I'm gonna stop filming again in case um, there's something down there that we're not supposed to see. But look up above what they do with their retired chops. They do not sell them uh, in the marketplace. They just retire them, hang on to them because again, it's all copyright. Okay, so we're gonna do a demonstration of the laser guided cutter and um, it'll cut through 80 layers at once. So those women have been ironing it. And I'm just going to back so you see. These are the gals that are ironing, pressing, stacking. It's going to come through. I think I'm going to come behind him. I'm sorry, Randy. I'm going to sneak behind him. This is setting it. Like that was fast. Come on down this way for everybody. all of the and if you could tell what happened or not but there's a hole there and it sucked all the air out and so that plastic is holding it down nice and flat so it's not going to slip and then all of the fabric is kind of being held down I think he's still lining it up you can see his little laser light like we do, you know, when we're going to clean up our edge. Check its other edge. Lining it up. Obviously got waste. He's checking all of his corners. Worst thing is if we would get a um, Bali pop that's shaped like a dog leg. check check four times cut once he's got a pretty significant job I mean each oh it, there it goes because each Bali pop of course is going to retail for what about $47 oh these might be layer cakes we're not quite sure what he's cutting Cutting the plastic, that's what he's doing now. I think you're right, I think it's fat quarters. we did, we have a little edge. Uh, are they making fat quarters or are they making, no, they're gonna make the, um, oh, headers. 
Oh, the making headers. For the sales reps. Oh, sorry. Sorry, sorry. That's what they're doing. This one is Spring Flight for a Neapolitan Park. Oh, this is from two years ago. <laughs> you should have got it when we sold you to yeah. them. I didn't know you then. <laughs> we found um, this is all of their gray good, the white stuff that they start with um, before they dye it. Yeah, the gray good. This is where they come for the final assembly process uh, for the headers. So they pink the edges and then um, sew them all together. And this is how we see them when Aaron here oops, I'm sorry, comes to our shop and uh, we try to pick what we think you guys might like. And then this is how they keep track of um, what they've done and what the pattern was and what the name was and when they did it, September. Uh, 2023 so these are ones that I've already seen I'm sure already ordered I'm sure I've already sold to you um, and that was the, yeah so they're doing some reprinting of them which is good yeah beautiful beautiful there's more September 2023 you can see the amount uh, that they do, which is why it's so difficult to know what to order. Um, oh yeah, look at all the chops. I'm gonna do a little tour. So look on the back wall here, all of the chops and hanging up. I might get a little closer. So we have unearthed a wood chop. Wow, that's amazing. That's fantastic. You know, and you'd think then, because now they kind of curve it, so I wonder if probably, I would think it wouldn't be as fine of a mm -hmm. mark as right, the copper. Yeah. Right. Oh, he's cleaning off another one. People are going to freak out that he's using all of that batik as a rag. <laughs> Just forget what you saw. Forget that you saw that. Oh, wow. oh, yeah. Gosh, that's fantastic. Wow. And what a cool pattern. searching back there. I'm, I'm going to get back there to do a better tour for you. All of these wood chops that are up here. And I believe that a lot of the ones up here are actually the retired ones. I don't know that for sure. And all of these are copper. And if you missed the earlier part, they have an artist uh, that does it. They have a couple of them. It's just one of those um, traditional things that um, they sort of pass down for how to make them from a drawing. I'm not sure what's happening back there, but anyway, lots and lots and lots of chops. They've been doing it. Um, Hoffman is celebrating their 100th year this year, and Hoffman Batiks, um, we uh, love them even more so now it's just so fun to really see the whole process and to meet the oh there's another wooden one you see the wooden one so if i can zoom in on it there's another one uh two uh you can see the two both of those are wooden chops but to see the process and meet the people has been pretty amazing What he is demonstrating down there is the machine that does the pinking. And I just want to point out again, this is a bedroll. So again, you know, you meet people from the outlying villages. They don't own vehicles. And so if they're working for $3 a day, which, you know, don't judge Hoffman for that. It's just the way that it goes. It's, it's the economy. Everybody that we've talked to has said they are so happy to have the job that it doesn't you know, they are not it, doing the math. There's a lot of people involved in this process and um, they create a lot of jobs. They um, 
uh, do a, a lot of um, community outreach. They donate lots and lots of sheets and blankets and fabric. And um, they have a water purification plant, which is super special. And the other thing that we may not have mentioned is that when they wrap the bolts in plastic, I think we sometimes say this during box opening, um, they use a biodegradable plastic. It is not plastic. It is water soluble. Thank you for watching our video. We invite you to leave a comment, hit the like button, or better yet, subscribe to our channel so you never miss an episode. You can also visit our Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, or Pinterest pages, or find all of those things and our online store at fabricpatch.net.